do you understand like kind of like a general idea of the plot that's going on here, Brian? Uh, the green-haired prick became what was it the Pope or some <laughs> shit? No, he became a duke. And yeah, the duke. Not the yep, pope. that's the word. He became the duke of the I'm town. Like so he has what you might call it more uh, more power than he did when he was part of the circle. Am I getting that right? I mean, when you become your own like little cult, I mean, I think you just automatically oh, get more power. So, based, right. so whatever. Okay, the justification they're trying to give is that um they're trying to give more relevance to the NPCs because you know we 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 like to think that like the players they're like OP and they can do whatever they want, but they're what they're saying in this episode is really that like they still rely on the NPCs for a lot for like for food and other materials and in their production. So even like even a lot of the guilds like. The crafting guilds still rely on their materials and other things from the NPCs, and like they're saying how it's still very like medieval style, where like only the oldest gets to stay in the village, and if you don't, if you don't have a useful skill, you basically can't stay in the village. And so these other NPCs, they felt like refugees in Akiva because when they, because um, they get, they get to do quests and they get to change like their crafting job, their subclass basically. From doing quests, which I guess is the first thing, the first time it's ever happened. So it's it's so it's it's like uh like social they get they get social mobility just from being in this town, but they were still like they're still like um they don't feel stable just because like they still feel like they're just refugees. So so when they when they see that um that a noble is coming like basically in this in this world like like nobility when you're noble even though like you're rich and powerful or you still have a duty to take care of like like the people you 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 rule over so they're actually excited that like someone's actually gonna like have responsibility so that everything happens to them like like the hope they're thinking that like like they'll be taken care of because i guess they still don't trust like the players or the adventurers so so now that um the one of the players is becoming a duke, like they feel more more comfortable around him. The NPCs feel more comfortable, but like the the guild leaders, they're afraid that like it's just he's he's the duke of the 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 neighbor kingdom. So they're they're just afraid that like because the two kingdoms are in conflict, they're gonna get caught in this in the war between them eventually. And so that's like. That's what I, I gathered from this episode, and also, and also, like, um, they're trying to, they're trying to, like, uh, make their, make their um, diplomacy better by marrying the two sides. But they guys make it sound like you know the princess wants to cut it off with the, uh, she wants to cut off her marriage to the creepy guy. So that's also another form of conflict. So just a lot of, a lot of moving parts going on in like the background here. So I have no idea how you got all that, David. Holy yeah, shit! It, it, <laughs> It's really hard to keep track of, cause, dude, I'm over here waiting for another raid fight to happen, and it <laughs> it's ain't mostly like, it's bro. like it's a it's a lot of like the yeah a lot of the process is setting up, and also they also mentioned before too in the history how, um, there used to be like like the because it's based off real Japan, but there used to be one, uh, one king, and they used to be like a, a real family, but then, um, but then I think they got invaded, and basically the king decided to protect his capital instead of everywhere else, so people. So the Westland people they distrust like that that air, that side because they didn't help protect them because they that they they um, prioritize their capital instead of instead of like the rest of the, the country so that's also a poor com- a point of conflict and then when the king died I think they're saying his imperial blood passed on to the Westlands people and so they feel like they're more of a legitimate they're the, they're the legitimate heir- heirs of like the the real bloodline so just so I, a question that i have since you know i haven't watched this season yet but is the primary focus as you kind of alluded in this latest episode they with like more of the political and like power Definitely. struggle yes. and it's all power relation struggles. to yes. so then is it that the does the round table that kind of they have the members from are those members from different servers because like the servers if i remember correctly are like different parts of either japan or the world right no, i think it's servers no, it's, it's the same okay. server, different guild it's different guild. Guild. Uh, it's, it's okay guild but it's also in... that that main server that they yeah. are already on yeah okay mm-hmm. yeah and, and, and do they basically dictate like all decisions that happen in it, that? it's uh, i mean they're the main the main conflict is that like they're not 
it's not a governing body. It's like a co-op, basically. Mm, so they can only do okay. things if they all agree to each other. And that's why... And um, and also, um, uh, they were saying... Or um, Ainz was saying his biggest criticism was that like, because it's consensus-based... Because it's it's more similar to Japanese companies than like actually than other where it's like mm-hmm. where um it's consensus based and like you can't do anything because because one person doesn't agree with, to it that um uh, okay. you can't react fast to to like any urgent situation so got um, it so just a lot yeah a bunch of power struggles and also like yeah it's all it's all guilds like no one really no one um I guess no one um. Was higher than anyone besides, besides uh, Krusty. But he was he was like mm-hmm. before. I guess he was the de facto leader because of his charisma. But now that he's gone, they don't have a unifying person like or someone with a strong voice like he did. Got it. And so it's also safe to say, like based off Brian's comment of like they haven't really gone back to like any like guild fights or everything. And again, I know it's only episode three, but mm-hmm. has it really just been more of that serious focus? Like yes. they don't even have like anything lighthearted or what we kind of came to expect from the previous seasons. Yep. Yes. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> That's why Good I dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, again, I, re- I, even though it is, I, I admit it is like confusing. Keep track. Of, I still like the world and the lore, so I'm trying to keep track of all the things that happen. But even I'm having trouble. But it's like yeah. I want to like it. I know it's a, I know it's a really good show. But my God, like I se- seriously still wish they would have had like a recap episode. Just like an. I would take 30 minutes, but I think even an hour would have been perfectly fine just to kind of just go through like the main parts of the previous season. I think an hour would have been too long, but... There's something maybe in the first episode at the very beginning, like a five minute like, hey, remember all these guilds and these guys? I think more than that. I think they definitely need at least an episode of a recap. I think it's... There was so much stuff. Like, I don't remember people's names. I barely remember what happened. I forgot... I forgot even Krusty was a character. And I forgot what happened to him (laughs) at the end of the previous season. See, this is what happened across these. Like, I'm still trying to remember, but like a lot, I'm starting to understand more about the power struggles. So, um, yeah, it's well. My my problem with the show is the fact that you know when the first season or so came up, like it was a lot more fun to watch, right? It was interesting. Some lore was nice and all, but now it's just become too serious, and it's kind of IRL. Really well, political. you're kind of yeah, you're kind of going away from the fantasy aspect and going more into like IRL like political aspects, and mm-hmm. like to me, that's not what made the show like interesting or fun. Like you know, I agree that you know, lore is nice here and there, but it's at this point you have to remember every little tidbit that happened in season one and two add more characters to that in season three and you, you kind of just like lost what was like great about the show like what mm-hmm. brian said you know like the they had the giant raid like oh you know we have an issue of money what are we gonna do but yeah let's go do this raid underneath the city and fight three giant like raid bosses to like meet the makers of money and get the funds to do so or whatever yeah you know I like do, that that was pretty cool interesting i do but. agree they should break up break it up more into like to more of like more like mmo style like because it's mainly been like more guild style like like politics where it's like guild members like arguing with each other or like or guild rivalries and factions where it's like yeah it would be nice to go back to more of like the rating aspects so it just needs to be more balanced because just this first three episodes was heavily on like the guilds and like their struggles so yeah like you want to talk about forest drama this is forest drama that i don't want <laughs> you know <laughs> like if this shit was in hell or mia i would not care for it as much but actually, you know, there's gotta be some variety with it i think it's also i because, mean i'm like, not... oh i was saying, i think it's also because like the first two seasons we're we're um ex- they're explaining more about the world like i think we've we've hit a lot of the mechanics of the, the mmo and yeah now it's just like it just feels it just feels like i mean it had to happen at some point yeah. right so <laughs> I mean, I'm not even going to hate the show because it's unfortunate like, that they couldn't balance it. Yeah, yeah. like I'm not even going to hate the show from like all the political stuff and basically like the heavy, like the heaviness, because it is different than a lot of other isekais. Because a lot of other isekais do focus more on like the I action. Mean, again, and kinda, it's like, MMO, so I still yeah. I, Sorry, I, I, def- well, I definitely should be between MMOs and the reincarnations. But and... they're like stuck in it though. Like, shouldn't it be like an isekai because they don't even know they were in a game at one point, but now they don't know what's going on. It's like Overlord. I guess. Yeah. I guess, in this, in this, I guess in this show too, they're trying to make other MMO shows like they. It's like they pretty much like separate. Like they make you, they explicitly say like these are just NPCs, so they don't really matter. Whereas here, like they're trying to blur the line, saying like these are, you, even though they're NPCs, you still should consider them as like characters and people. Yeah. So. No, this is a good show, but I just wish I knew more. And without having to watch, uh, uh... what did I say like? 
48, 52 episodes again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not not anymore, Sren. Not anymore. Yep. So. <laughs> I guess I'll be like, I, I, I don't know. How you think, Brian? Do you like, are you feeling you're going to drop it like Koo because there's not enough of the rating aspects? Absolutely no way. I... <laughs> Brian? What? Sorry. Are you like Koo <laughs> and you feel like you need to drop it soon because there's not enough rating and other fun MMO stuff? Uh, I mean, I'll probably still sort of watch it, but it's just, it's just the interest is just not there. Oh I, I wasn't like hooked to it like I was like mm-hmm. who knows how long ago. I think it was like so. four years ago or something, three or four years ago. Long. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. Time. When I was a wee lad, <laughs> yeah, yes. but, different but, days, different times. Because the interesting thing about this show for me was that like. I just happened to stumble upon it, and I was instantly hooked because of, like, how the story was going, like, the class system, all this cool stuff, and, like, their intricate, like, sort of combats and how they did stuff, and I was like, damn, this is pretty dope, and I'm coming now, it's like, there's politics, and I hate politics with a (laughs) fucking passion, like, a burning passion, so it's like... Man, I don't care about those, man. Just throw me in a raid, like, a dungeon, give yeah. me some PvP, and call it a day. Like, they, they, like, day like, day. like, they don't even have to do, like, like they can even just, like, laugh the politics, just, like, do what more, like, strategy, just, like, raid strategies. Like, that was satisfied a lot of people who are into the politics as well. Like, you could be strategic in your raid setup and your, your team comps, too, but they don't, they're still not even doing that, so. Yeah, it's just, the, the things that were very interesting in the first and second season just isn't there yet. But, but, so. What also makes the show bad, too, is when you show that damn bard character. <laughs> Your favorite. Right at, the, right at the beginning of the episode. Oh, I, was, I, I, was like, that like, I remember it, seeing that. I was like, he back. looks really no. familiar. And then it clicked to me. I was like, oh, he's the bard. Yeah. Also, yeah, I, I, thought I, was, I thought it was the girl who was the bard. Yeah, the girl was the bard. One of them. Yeah, the girl was the bard. Yeah, the other dude. I don't even remember the other guy. He's like, I think, like, a knight or whatever. No idea. I was so triggered by the bard. I don't I don't even remember that guy. Yeah. I just want to say, too, Um, I think also, like, they, I wish... I do wish they also do more of like yeah like rate more of the game mechanics because I feel like other MMO shows they don't do a lot of like animes that do like game moments still don't do them well because it's the perspective of a writer not who someone who's like a game designer or like someone who's like a pro gamer or like understands pro gamers that's why I think there's a lot of politics in here because like he's writing in the perspective of a writer trying to write a story not like not someone who's who play games often <laughs> so. That's why I yeah. wish it would do more too. Like we need more game focused shows. Well, again, we have nine episodes possibly left of the season to yeah. see what happens. Or no, not ten. Ten, sorry. Yeah. So so that's that's it for Lock Horizon for this week. And we actually uh, talked about it a lot more than I thought. Yeah, same. So we'll see yeah, if we continue next week. <laughs> you carried, David. You carried. Okay.